Hi guys, welcome to this um, quick tutorial on how to create uh, your dream bedroom. Uh, I've chosen bedroom because many people at the moment are probably working from their bedrooms and that's the whole point of this course as well. Uh, here at Ademshik we want to give you something extra for this time that is maybe not so joyful and it's quite stressful. And we think that we can share some of our knowledge to make your interiors and your homes a little bit happier, especially now that we all have some time on our hands and we're noticing all the little bits that we're not loving so much about our homes, uh, maybe. Um, so if we just look at uh, the title of today, uh, I'm going to be talking about creating an interior from scratch um, and I have some really fabulous example here that I want to share with you for that. Um, a little bit about uh, who I am and why you should care. Um, so I run a company called Ademshik and we are creating uh, stunning developments, uh, mostly new built, larger buildings um, for um, uh, property developers in the UK and abroad. Um, we have a team of 10 people and those are our account managers over here, the very happy team, uh, which is working from home right now, just like the rest uh, of us out there. Um, and we, w why do we know how to style uh, stuff? Well, we very often do interior CGI's, which is uh, so, so, some like over here where we're creating interior from scratch and selecting all the different bits to make it look luxurious, interesting, different, uh, to really give the buyers an idea of what they're getting. But also then once the development is finished, we create show homes and it's very similar. All of the items need to be selected, brought in, installed, and we need to create that warm, cozy, happy feeling for people so that when they come through the interior, they think, wow, th this could be my forever home. Um, and this is what I'm going to teach you, kind of how we put the scheme together, how I think about interiors, how to make them look interesting. Um, and hopefully after this session, you will look at your room and think, wow, I, there is so much that I can change around here uh, and I know exactly where to start. So let's get uh, let's get on with it. Um, for the purpose of this um, uh, installation, this this training, I've chosen a flat. I've actually had a huge selection of flats online uh, in my area in London. Um, that are currently selling and have really quite unbelievable <laughs> pictures online. So this is just one of them, uh, a three bedroom flat for sale, 1.1 million available now on the market since January, you know, just uh, quite a long time already. No surprise that no one hasn't chosen it uh, if it looks like this. Dirty carpets, dirty walls, etc. Um, not very attractive. So I've cleaned up this picture uh, so that we can use it for our um, our training, uh, and I will show you how I would tr completely transform this room and the whole uh, and the whole flat uh, with a couple of tricks that we are using in when we're interior designing our properties and styling properties. So first of all, we're always asked about all the tools that we're using to create a, a scheme. Uh, and actually, you don't have to be um, so, um, so educated in all of the tools to create a good scheme and to kind of see it on a piece of paper. You know, in the old days, you used to cut out pieces from newspapers, from magazines, and collect them on some sort of um, physical mood board. Um, but what we very often do in Ademshik, we create digital mood boards for ourselves and they can be very easily created in either PowerPoint or Keynote. And Keynote is what I'm using today. 
I will show you in a minute um, how I use it. Um, but um, I think these two options are super valuable for you if you want to create something for your own house or also if you are creating it for maybe a, a, you're a landlord or for a family member um, uh, or even if you want to create schemes for sale. So I would, re I would really urge you to look at PowerPoint in under the color section. You have a setting which is called set transparent color and that removes the background. Um, and in Keynote, um, there is a setting which is called under format instant alpha. Um, and I will show you in a minute how we are using that. So for this particular example, I think I would start with creating some walls. So if I just come out of here and show you an example of how we could create a wall. Um, in Keynote, it is really easy for me. Um, I, I will be using this image going forward uh, to create my mood board. So uh, I've already created one of the walls. But if I wanted to create more, and they might be very awkward shape. I'm just creating a basic shape. I'm pasting it where I want it to be. And then I'm editing all of the angles. So I'm just dragging all of the four edges wherever I want them to be. And you know, it's a very, very quick um, situation. I've just created one wall and I now need to change the color of it to whatever I want it to be. So in Keynote, very easy, I'm changing the color of the walls. Now I really hate Magnolia, so if someone shows me a Magnolia wall, I will immediately feel slightly sick. Uh, hence, I am creating a very neutral color of the walls. Um, so all of our developments will be painted with something beautifully neutral, with kind of ye yellowish undertone, because then it's a little bit, well, you know, it's quite warm. Um, and then sometimes we might choose to do a feature wall like over here. I'm going to keep that color slightly darker. So once again, if you want to create a quick wall, you know, cover up whatever you have on your image, or maybe you have some furniture in your house that you don't really like and you would like to start from scratch. Well, that is possible. You create a, mm, a square, you make it editable and then you adjust it to wherever you want it to be. And then we paint it whatever we want. So if we want a purple wall or per, per, even purple um, a feature wall, we could do that. You know, if we want to choose our own special color, we can choose it over here. Whatever color you want, it's super easy to create it on your mood board in Keynote. Now, I really love neutral walls, so I've added my gray, brighter gray walls everywhere. And I have also added a feature wall, <clears throat> which will be really beautiful backdrop for the headboard of our bed. Now, what I would also do is I would cover this floor with something else um, that might not be available to those of you who are in a rental flat. But um, I don't, I don't particularly like um, uh, carpets in, in bedrooms, mostly because what happens is this happens, you know, this sort of uh, awful stains happen quite often if you don't have something that can be wipeable. So for the purpose of this exercise, I've covered up most of the floor with something I really love. I love bright interiors. Uh, happy, joyful interiors. I don't very often uh, put dark walls and I don't think we actually have uh, one project where we put dark walls in. So here I've added this beautiful, uh, bright, scandy floor. And it doesn't matter that the interior is slightly misshaped at the moment. I, I, I know exactly how it's, you know, how... how I need to position things. I still can see the bed so that I can adjust the size of the bed that I'm going to be positioning over this image. Uh, so I think I'm good to go. Uh, and once again, how, how you paste this sort of flooring in here. Well, that, that's an interesting one as well. 
So I've actually used an image. Uh, I've downloaded it from the internet. You can see it over here. Um, and that was an image of, um, I think I have it over here. So I've just basically went um, on the website, go to page. Uh, I've Googled wood floor or bright wood floor in um, Google, drop that in. And then a bunch of images appeared for my liking. And I've gone through the uh, pages. I've selected something that has a similar perspective. So if you look at this image, you can see that the perspective is kind of, it gets smaller in the background and larger in the front. And there is a lot of uncovered space, perfect, no carpets, no other items that I, I need to get rid of. So I'm just downloading this image and then going into, uh, into what I have on my presentation. <clears throat> so now I'm going to show you the example of how to bring this image into what you have. So let's say that I copied it into here already or dragged and dropped it from my, um, from my images. And then I'm just going to edit it. And it's super easy in Keynote. And it's also very easy in PowerPoint. In PowerPoint, you click um, um, a feature that is called Crop. And over here, it works exactly the same, but just the buttons are maybe slightly different. I click, double click on the image. I can change um, the crop. And then I can also change kind of the size of it. So if I want it larger, smaller, you know, if I want to crop it a bit more. So I could have done exactly that. I've already prepared my floor over here. So I stretched it a little bit more like so, you know, then I decided, oh, I actually need that bit over here on the top, not the, lit not the very large, uh, not the very large pieces at the front. And then I just cut it like I wanted it. So a very easy way of doing it. I'm just going to go back to my image that I've had over here in case someone wants this uh, presentation later. But uh, based on this exact example, uh, I've done all of the future images, which I will also show you. By the time we finish, you will know exactly what to do. So now that my floor is ready and my floor is actually made out of two different pieces, of the same image so I pasted one on another I couldn't quite cut out this bit but I'll worry about that later it's more or less uh, the right perspective you know it's kind of goes up that way um, and I want to position all of the other items on top of it and once I once I've created a neutral floor and I've created neutral walls which I always do in the scheme I then start thinking about some softening the scheme, which is adding some soft furnishings. And the first thing I would do is probably to add curtains. <clears throat> so in this particular scheme, we have, um, you know, I'm going to start with some soft kind of neutral curtains. Ultimately, I want to create a really cool, colorful interior. So we will probably replace them later, but I'm exactly like on the f with the floor, I'm going on to Google uh, and I'm Googling uh, some gray curtains or something like that. And I'm looking in particular for the same angle because I want it to look good on my on my image. So it's kind of it's it's quite similar. It probably could be more an, uh, at an angle, but it will already give me an idea of how my space will look like if I have this sort of grayish curtains and these nice kind of um, white ones in the middle that just diffuse light so beautifully. So then go in, uh, you know, that sort of curtains are really easy to get wherever, you know, I showed you, I just Googled quickly what Ikea has in stock and they are not very ex expensive, 29 pounds uh, for a pair of curtains like these. And also if you want to just um, this sort of easy uh, drop uh, ones, the white ones, they are, I think, nine pounds. So you can you can see how you already have in this is 
bringing a completely different look to the space because it's making it much softer and much more um, romantic and cozy. Uh, always when windows are exposed, they are more modern, they look more modern, but they don't make the space uh, very nice. So start, guys, I, I'm super happy. I have my neutral backdrop and now I'm thinking, starting to think about the big elements that I want to get into the space. And that's really where all of my features will come, will come from. And this is a big choice. Um, what color I want, what style I want, uh, you know, how is it an upholster bed, a wood frame, a metal one, and that is going to then position the whole scheme uh, and how I built around it. But the color is really the most in interesting and, and important. And I really love creating stuff, um, you know, selecting items that are colorful. So if we just go to a website like made.com, for example, and find there a bunch of beautiful beds, probably select one that has really nice upholstered frame, uh, a little bit on the Scandi side, a little bit kind of more interesting. Um, so scrolling through, scrolling through. I'm actually, for this exercise, I've just chosen a bed that looks good and has the right angle. So one more time, you know, uh, I wanted something that fits within my my mm, newly created uh, scheme. So this image, for example, wouldn't fit because it's at a slightly different angle that uh, that the one in my um, in my uh, mood board. Um, so I've chosen something slightly different. And if I just go back to my presentation, um, the bed that I went for is this one which has fabulous, fabulous green color, this sort of intense green, which, you know, it's kind of at the right angle for my, for my image, just to do a quick mood board. <clears throat> Obviously, if you're creating a scheme for your home, you will never choose a bed on the basis of which angle it has on the image. But, um, uh, you know, for, for this particular exercise, I could use that. Uh, and then I'm saving this image and bringing it into uh, my space. Uh, and once again, I will copy it into the slide and then I'm going to use it again. Then I'm going to make it larger, just kind of the same size as I need here. Something probably like that. If you just look at the image you have at the back in the background, yeah, fits perfectly. That's exactly what I need. But now I have all of this exterior over here, which I don't really want. So I'm going to cut out as much as possible. Double click, readjust my image, you know, cut it off. I don't need that table. I don't need everything on the floor. Okay, I kind of, I did something. It's not quite what I need. And then uh, this is where... Uh, my favorite feature of instant alpha comes in. I go into format over here. I go into image. I go into instant alpha. And with one click, I'm removing a lot of the background. Some stuff that I need to remove, like I've already cut these bits, so I probably don't need to remove them. Um, but then very easily you can go into something like this if you just drag the circle a bit too far it will remove half of your bed. So we need to go back and uh, only remove the bits you don't need. And this can be a really annoying piece of work because something like that, which has all the different colors, you will have to do one by one. Although when you have bigger surfaces like this, it will go fairly quick. So because this has taken maybe uh, three or four minutes, I have already done it. It's not ideal, but it shows me how this bed will look like in this space. You know, there is still a bunch of items here, but it's fine because I'm going to have uh, styling around it. I'm going to have a rug. It's fine. Like I'm starting to really like this scheme now because 
what we have here is we have a nice feature wall. We have this really cool bed. The color is gorgeous. And the floor that I love, you know, it, I, I can see that it's going to be really interesting. But um, I'm not loving these curtains. I think they are quite boring. Um, they are making the scheme really boring. So I'm going to bring in the color already now. And that's a lesson that you always have to readjust when necessary. You know, you go in, you change things, you don't just go because you already bought this and it has to stay. No, you can constantly change, constantly amend and make your interiors more interesting. So what I thought is that this green will look amazing if it has the yellow with it. Um, so I've just Googled whatever yellow curtains I could find. And actually the ones that I found were from Anthropology. I will show you the link. They look so beautiful. They are velvet, which is completely different lesson. I can talk, talk for hours about velvet and fabrics and materials. And there is a bunch of really cool colors. So we could go for this color, but that doesn't bring enough contrast. So something that brings more contrast is either that color or this gorgeous yellow. I actually wanted something more orange. Um, <clears throat> so I stole this picture and then I, you know, kind of, I Googled orange and that yellow popped up. So I had to take it. It's at a uh, more or less the right angle for here. So I just used these curtains and I actually drove the saturation a bit up over here on the image uh, so that I get that orange and I might buy them somewhere else. You know, I'm, I'm, I can get uh, custom made orange velvet curtains, which will look beautiful. So for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to go with orange. Orange and green is our scheme. So it was a bit boring. Now it's a bit more interesting. I've brought these into my mood board in exactly the same way. I cut out the two pieces so that they fit a bit better. You know, there are two separate pieces now uh, so that they fit a bit better on my um, curtains. And then um, I'm starting to look at smaller accessories, which will make all of the color tie in together. So I need to basically find something that is that has a bit of green in it, a bit of orange and yet another color to make it interesting. So if I go on a website uh, like the same this in your, for example, and there is a bunch of things that could work for this scheme, you know, a lot of interesting posters. Um, and I want to choose something that has that sort of orangey feel about it. Oh, here I, I even have oranges. So this is perfect for what I need because it has the orange color and it has the green. So it ties the whole scheme together. It has the two colors that I need. So I'm going to bring that in into my picture and I found a second picture very often the websites like this will suggest other options that will fit with the first uh, one so great there is something similar colors super interesting I would love to have that on my wall um, so I'm just gonna bring both of these in and they are now starting to create my scheme making it a bit more interesting so hey, what else is missing in here? I mean, a wardrobe is missing, some sort of coffee table, some sort of rug. This wall is so empty, I would never leave it that empty. So let's start with finding a rug. And one thing that I would always do, like uh, we could look at IKEA for, for how quick we can find something. But um, one thing that is missing for me in this scheme is pattern. And I love adding pattern and it love, adds so much interest into the scheme. So I know that IKEA has this really cool um, black and white rug, 
which is very cheap, you know, 60 pounds. It looks amazing in the interior. And it's just the right interest for what I need. So I'm going to use that for my scheme and paste it in. Here you are, quick search. I actually need to use this image from Ikea's website because they don't have anything else that's good and has this angle that I need um, for, for my image. So I've looked at the website over here, you know, like I can't use that image for my mood board. I can't use that one. I can't really use that one because it has too much furniture on it. So I'm just going to use one of the client's images for it. And if I go back to my, my space, you know, here you are, that rug, I've cut it out, just the same example as I showed you before. Uh, first of all, I made it larger to fit my space. Second of all, I'm cutting out all the bits that I don't need very quickly. So I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. And now I'm using my favorite instant alpha tool to remove all of those bits that I don't need around the rack. Oh, there is still one that is here. Get rid of that. And that way I have a rug. You know, I can position it where I want it. I want it obviously underneath the bed because I don't have much use for it and above the bed. So I'm going to change elements on my mood board. I'm going to move this bed to front. And that way my rug ended up underneath the bed. Like magic. <laughs> So let's stick with the rug that I already have and look at some more, adding some more interest to this, especially a wardrobe because joinery will very often do create a completely different feel of the space. Uh, and for that, I'm going to go to Swoon Editions. Uh, and that's just something that, you know, once you shop so much like we do, uh, they have beautiful, very interesting uh, wardrobes. Uh, side tables, etc., that will just make my space very uh, appear appear quite interesting. So if I just look for some sort of larger wardrobes over here, I'm not sure if oh that one, yep, yeah. it's perfect. This one is perfect because it's under the angle I need, although it's turned the other way. <laughs> So it will cause me a little bit of uh, work, but that can very easily be fixed. I import the image, I drag it into my presentation. I've saved it on my um, images before. I make it larger. I adjust it to how big I need it for the space. I cut it all out. as close as possible to the elements that I want to get rid of. And now I just use instant alpha to get rid of all the all of the shadows and colors that I don't need. And voila, it's beautifully cut out. But it's still facing the wrong way, which is not quite what I wanted. Um, I'm going to make it slightly larger, I think, for this space. And I'm actually going to use a feature here, which is called Arrange. And I can flip it the other way around over here with this little arrow. So now it's like sitting in the right place. I can, if I just double click it, I can change the size of this image and actually, you know, remove the bit that's outside of the image so that it looks like the wardrobe is in the right place. It's very easy. You find what you want and then you paste it under the right angle. So here I've already done it uh, in exactly the same way. Hey, my scheme, if we just look at it, it's starting to look like something compared to what we had before, which was this. 
you know, you can pretty quickly, I could add up all of the costs that I just spent to, to get to this space and it would be just a couple of thousand. Um, so if we, if we now look at the next thing, point number six on my to-do list is to bring in some interesting lights and lighting elements and that's again I think each of these different points could be a separate lesson and it is a separate lesson if you want to learn more about this and not be rushed through an hour presentation we are starting to look at the lights how do you add interest with cool lights so those ones are ones that we just purchased for a show home they look absolutely fabulous if we go to page, they are on made.com. They're super cheap, 49 pounds right now. Uh, and they, they, they look really stunning. They are giving me, they were giving me a little bit of a headache when I wanted to add them because they are not very good for my mood board. Very difficult to cut out from this picture. So I'm sorry that they don't look as fabulous over here, but I promise you in real life they would. And obviously we need to adjust where do we want them. I've positioned them on both sides of the bed. Um, the rule of two kind of symmetry in an interior always gives it uh, that fabulous look. That's why we have two, per two pictures. That's why we have two cushions typically of the same, you know, two cur curtains. We have two diff different lights over here. Uh, and that is how I would like my bedroom to look like. And then we're, we're creating bedside table. I mean, we have quite some small space over here. It's because we chose a very large bed, which is potentially like a nice king size bed over here. Um, and then we're looking at what coffee table we could bring. And for that, we're going to go to website of West Elm, which is fabulous. I love it. Um, and they have a bunch of different coffee tables that we could choose from. Same, actually, we could probably go to find a really beautiful uh, coffee tables on, um, on Swoon Editions. And I'm just going to go for something simple like that. Oh, 25% off. Complete, beautiful result. And also what's good over here, guys, is for us, we need images with white background to paste them into our mood board. So this is perfect for me. And I would download it and then drag it into my image. And I can very easily cut it out. So first of all, it's probably the right size right now. Yeah. And then if I go to Instant Alpha, I remove everything in one go. Wow, result, so easy. So let's go to the one I've already cut. Beautiful. Um, what is still really annoying me when I look at this is everything is looking fine apart from this wall, which is so empty. And actually, if you think about this room, what is most likely to be on that wall is some sort of large mirror so that you can get up, um, you can walk over here, you can grab something from your wardrobe, see yourself as you leave the room. Um, so I'm just going to uh, look up like really cheap, uh, nice mirrors in Ikea. They have um, that one for just under £100, which is almost two meters tall, I believe. Uh, I'm not going to look for it right now, but... Um, I'm going to choose just the cheaper one over here. So if I go here and I look at the images. OK, perfect. Look, guys, this is exactly at the angle we need for our for our wardrobe um, mood board. And we can test how it looks like if we just use this image. So let me I download it to the image. I do, you know, I resize it exactly how I want it. Then I cut it out just like I would otherwise. With my special tools. Because it's a mirror, it will always have this reflection that's already there that we cannot do anything about that. 
but we can always cut out around it and then we can flip it because we actually need it to be other a different angle so like so I made the mirror over here a bit larger because I know that I would buy the one that is mm, whatever 160 or two meters high I don't remember which one that is and so I've made it a bit larger um, and I'm just keeping it over here and it, and you can actually I, I really love this look because I know that um, if I were a buyer coming into this space I would look in a mirror and I would look at this cozy bed uh, and cozy colors and, and quite interesting uh, space. Um, so I think that mirror is actually the right thing over there on that wall. But the whole point of this mood board is really to teach you how to test all the different items. You know, I'm, I'm running through a script over here of what I already pre-selected for this space. Um, but uh, you can you can position anything, any 10 different things on that wall just to see before you buy how it would look like. And I think there is a lot of people that come to us or they used to come to me in early days when I was on my own and still working with uh, homeowners. Um, they were coming to, to me telling me that they always buy the wrong thing. They don't know how... Everything is going to look like in the space. They don't know until they bring it to the house and it just doesn't look right. And the point of this mood board is that you can do all of that on from images that you find online. Maybe take a picture of your home and then start applying things until you build up the scheme uh, and you make it, um, you know, what you want it. You don't have to buy uh, blindly. You can try it first in your interior with something like this. So I'm going to keep the mirror and I'm going to move to uh, one of the last pieces uh, on our to-do list, which is soft furnishings. Um, and I always love having plenty of cushions on my bed um, uh, at home and also in the show homes. So I'm just going to find cushions that are working with my curtains, with my pictures. And I just that's just some orange orange cushions now personally i would never buy cushions from ikea um, because i think they don't look um, that expensive i really love velvety fabrics i love expensive looking cushions but for the color that i need in the smooth board they are fabulous for me so i'm just going to keep them and then i would probably find something similar on some other website Ikea is amazing for other things, so it's just one item that I would probably uh, skip. Um, and then I found some other um, cushion in Ikea as well, which actually was looking really interesting with my scheme. So it had those dark elements, this kind of blue similar to my coffee table. It had this orangey color similar to my curtains and this pinkish that also appears over here and that's like the whole point of building a scheme that you then find items that have like colors from one side of the room and the other side of the room and they like make the whole thing suddenly work so if you don't have those cushions it's quite empty it's quite kind of boring but then they add some interest to it together with the pattern rock that that really makes it interesting for me anyway and design is super uh, that's something i should have said at the beginning but design is so objective that's something that you know 10 designers might create i will not love and and you might not love this what i'm creating over here i'll show you at the end how you can tweak it very quickly um, um, but I think you just have to follow your gut, uh, you know, f choose the colors you love wearing, you love surrounding yourself with. Um, don't follow blindly what other people are saying. It's like it's uh, the interior will be whatever you want it to be. And, and, and you can build it up as much as you want. So as a last point, point number 10 in this interior, I'm just going to add a bunch of accessories and plants to make it feel a little bit more alive 
Um, and normally if I were styling a bookshelf or, uh, you know, or some sort of larger piece, then we could also run through accessories. Um, but here I will, I'm just going to do plants very quickly. And I'm going to go to Mainz as the month for it. And I found a bunch of different like fake plants there that I could choose, um, such as this cactus, which is very easy. I think cactus wouldn't, even cactus could die with my uh, plant experiences. Uh, and I'm going to maybe choose something like that. Very easy, beautiful images. So I download them, right click, download. Um, I actually have to open it uh, first, I think. And then save image to downloads. Then I drag it into my uh, presentation. I drag number, drag the first one. Then I clear it out, just like I do with my instant alpha tool. And then I go with for the second one, a cactus that I just showed you. And I place it in front of that mirror because it's really empty here on the floor. Um, and that's really what it takes to create something um, in an interior. You know, we used to have that. And just by changing and bringing all these elements, if you were to actually style it, you would get this very easily, you know, a, a cup, a little bit of paint, some different flooring and all of the element that I chose. Um, what I would say is that, you know, just making this small change um, of a feature wall in the future, you could just change this interior, but by literally changing colors of the that feature wall. Um, and it's, um, you know, there is the whole science of how colors um, on different walls create different feeling to the space, make it larger, make it wider, make it appear more narrow, etc. I really love uh, having a little bit of a feature behind the bed. Uh, so if it's a bright one like this one, or if it's a darkened one like this one, it's up to you. But what you could also do is you could make um, some items uh, larger or smaller, you know, like it's all about the scale. So, for example, just creating a, a uh, bringing a larger rug, for example, that will change the scheme as well. And then for those who of you who, you know, maybe don't love those colors, maybe this is a little bit too much for you. I mean, the whole purpose of this presentation is creating joyful interiors uh, but you could also create some moody interiors like this and look how easy it was to change this scheme you know we we are what we are changing is two cushions one pair of curtains and two pictures on the walls and just literally posters frames stay the same and we are getting a completely different look for the of this uh, space. And it's even this exactly the same suppliers, you know, like we're changing uh, the curtains from anthropology, we're changing these new uh, posters, and I'm keeping even the same um, uh, cushions. Now, if you want to go a bit more cozy, then you always have a choice of of kind of creating this wrap around uh, with all dark walls of the room and that will create the sort of den or however you you like to call it it will make it look smaller but also through that it will make it look more cozy um so you always have that choice colors are just such a beautiful place such a beautiful thing to uh, manipulate in interiors but if you you can also change like um, the style of the interior and um, you know the previous one was maybe a little bit more I don't know industrial more more uh, youngster the, this style the more boho chic is really you know up uh, right now people love it so I just created something different with yet again changing uh, just the color, so just the, um, the rug. I've added some accessories like this basket over here that my cactus sits in, and then I change a couple of picture and cushions. You know, it's that easy.
It's literally that easy. Once you have the framework, you then manipulate a couple of elements and the space changes. And once again, for those of you who are looking at this and going, my landlord will never allow me to create this dark room or, uh, you know, my I can never put in the floor, a new floor in, into this space. You know, you can still create a, a lot of this feeling through just decorating walls in a neutral color, neutral grayish color, and then bring in like putting a rug on the on the um, on your dirty carpet. Maybe it's not dirty, but <laughs> on a clean carpet, um, and and just keeping all of the accessories the same. Look, I even removed the lights, and it's still looking pretty cool. And actually, in a rental property, you can replace it with those cool wall um, floor standing lamps that will play exactly the same role. So hey guys, we've just covered so much material uh, about creating um, creating a nice scheme from this, go into something like that, like that, or like that. You know, plenty of options out there of how you could dress the spaces to make them feel more you, to make them feel more happy, especially now that we all have to work from home. Uh, and I hope this presentation was super useful for you and you know um, at least how to do put a scheme together from a technical perspective. Uh, and if you wanted to learn more about uh, styling, what sort of things you choose, about fabrics, about the quality of materials, about where to go for shopping, about... Um, you know, the color and how color changes the feel of the space um, or, or, or the size of the rooms. Uh, you know, all of that uh, we're going to cover in a series of, um, of uh, daily updates, uh, which are going out uh, for the next 10 days. If you want to sign up um, for, for that, uh, it's going to be a paid course. Uh, covering all of those different bits. Um, also, if you want us to do a quick interior design of your space uh, online, um, just through Skype, do exactly what we've done here, but advise where to buy all the different um, bits from the shops, put a quick scheme together. You can also ask us for that. All of the options for you, if you wanted to learn more and really completely revitalize your space, uh, so that you can work from home and stay there and really, really love it. Uh, all of those options are available below. Uh, have a look at what would work for you. And please, please leave a comment and share this with anyone who is struggling to create a space for themselves. And especially today when they, you know, they have to stay at home. Um, I would really love if they could enjoy it and if this presentation could help them um, feel more happy in their interior. Thank you, guys.